Before we turn our attention to taking all the solutions we've heard here from each other and achieving the 2030 Agenda, join us for a final reflection on the most inspirational, thought-provoking, and transformative moments from the 2020 SDG Action Zone. What a week, what an experience. Thank you so much for tuning in to the 2020 SDG Action Zone at this crucial moment for people and planet. Over the course of three days and on multiple stages, we've had a slew of fascinating speakers not only share what they're doing to advance the sustainable development goals, but also inspire us to reimagine on so many levels what's possible. So much so that it's easy to be cynical and to shrug off taking any action with a why bother? But not here, because here, together, in the SDG Action Zone, we looked at our future with both urgency and optimism. And in these three days, we've created, collectively, a vision of what the world can and should look like. Education can morph into virtual curriculums, giving everyone everywhere access to free, quality education. Gender parity can sweep parliamentarian floors across the globe. Climate action can sprout roots of activism globally that give rise to the strongest, most unrelenting young force, one that has us all. And the sustainable development goals, assuming we answer the call to action to accelerate like never before. And with that, I'm excited to welcome a few of the people who brought the zone to life. Here to join us, Dauda Jabarte, Global Head of the SDG Strategy Hub. Marina Ponti, Global Director of the SDG Action Campaign. Hannah Messenger, Global Event Strategist for the SDG Action Campaign, and Christina Mikalski, who is an integral member of the SDG Strategy Hub team and was essential to what we did here this week. Welcome, welcome. But before we jump into the key learnings of the week, Dauda, Marina, it honestly felt more important than ever for us to bring these conversations to the virtual stage this week. Why do you think this moment had such inherent urgency? And also, hi. <laughs> we're so happy to see you all. Uh, you know, we're we're at a huge moment of inflection right now. Um, for people, for planet, there we're being tested. Our humanity, our systems that have been created and solidified over the last generation or two. Um, you know, there's an invisible uh, virus that's really, really shaken the foundations and caused way too much loss of life and livelihoods around the world um, and you know the fragilities that existed going into that are now accentuated and the United Nations is turning 75 this year and it's really an invitation to reimagine the power structures of the world recognizing that power is in the hands of people uh, seeking a dignified a more self-actualized lives and the Secretary General has consistently returned to the notion of networked inclusive multilateralism being the solution to many of the problems that we face around the world. Uh, the SDG Action Zone's objectives are really based and foundation on the decade of action to deliver the SDGs, which is around you know, raising the level of ambition, mobilizing everyone everywhere, supercharging solutions uh, at this inflection point where the world is being reimagined in every single aspect. Um, and we've taken this opportunity to really democratize uh, what the SDG Action Zone is and allowing ourselves to bring the UN to the world and the world to the UN, albeit virtually. Marina? Thank you, Nadia. As, as Davda said, we are at a turning point for people and planet and change makers across sector during the last three days have been discussing the solution that we need to put in place from green job, from renewable energy, from social protection mechanism, to a reform, to welfare, to, to justice, to accountability system. So, and we have also seen while we were talking at the action zone, 38 million people from 100 countries took action to call leaders and ask them to turn it around for the goals. In other words, what we see and what we want are leaders to make the bold decision that have been delayed for too long on climate, on gender equality, on inclusion, and on justice. It's incredible. Now, Hannah, uh, Dauda mentioned that the ethos of the SDG Action Zone is bringing to the world to the UN and the UN to the world. Um, and 
though he said, albeit virtually, <laughs> there's an argument to make that we actually were able to do even more of that this year, um, though it wasn't the original plan. So can you speak to why that tenant um, helped make this week of amazing conversations possible, how that principle fit in? Yes, thank you, Nadira. So this year, when we began conceptualizing the SDG Action Zone, we found ourselves in a very different reality than we were last year when the this space was launched. And we found ourselves, like people all over the world, in many different ways, needing to adapt and respond to a way that matched the current pace of life. So we knew we needed to go virtual with this, but you know there was a lot of questions. Would this work? Would would people have the same interest level and you know the biggest piece of this puzzle that could make it happen that, that could even make it possible is the partnerships and the collaboration that have formed this program and the will that has brought all of these voices together um, so we put out an open call to our communities and we cast the net far and wide and we invited people from all walks of life um, with lots of different perspectives across a range of themes to tell us you know, what their solutions were, what they wanted to talk about. And we had this incredible opportunity because we weren't confined by a physical location um, that we were able- Which is to awesome, right? <laughs> yes, it really is. You know, people <laughs> everywhere could join this time around. Um, and the response was absolutely overwhelming and humbling. You know, the open call was open for less than two weeks and we received over 1,200 applications to host sessions, to deliver talks, to perform and host immersive content. Um, and it really is the will and the interest of all of these partnerships that's enabled this week to happen. Um, you know, we set out with our mission to take the UN to the world and really bring the world to the UN. So through all of these partners that have shaped the program, we've been able to bring different pieces of the puzzle together. And the other great thing about going fully virtual is that we can reach a much broader audience than ever before. Um, so we've been able to cast the net wide there and make digestible doses of this information to hit people where they are and in ways that they can respond to that. And it's all been um, incredible. I mean, we've had a week that has just run the gamut and of, of issues, of speakers, of geographies, of all sorts of conversations. Um, and that felt really special. So I know you all had some highlights. <laughs> I know I certainly did. Um, and I thought it'd be fun for us to talk about some of them. So maybe let's let's hear what your personal highlights were of this amazing 2020 SDG Action Zone. Dada, do you want to kick us off? Absolutely. Uh, so many, so many moments to choose from moments, such amazing conversations that were had, you know, if I do have to choose a couple, one would definitely be, you know, the conversation that you Nadira had with Sal Khan, the founder and CEO of Khan Academy, um, talk about force multipliers, you know, through his platform over the years, he, he mentioned that he had touched over a billion people globally uh, that have tuned into his content, which is obviously high quality, accessible and free for everyone with a connection. Um, and the idea of, you know, really bringing humanity back into teaching and back into learning uh, to unlock and unleash the full potential of people where they are. Um, you know, I think Eddie Ndoku, SDG advocate, uh, in conversation with Hindu Ibrahim, uh, was talking really about, you know, liberating the vulnerable and used a a line that just it, it went right through me, you know, around uh, we, you will be f when you are free. I will be free and we will all be free together or something along the lines of that, which is just remarkable. And Donna Bertarelli, uh, the fastest woman to sail around the world, you know, she has seen everything. She was talking about the abuse of the oceans and blue economy. Uh, she had mentioned that it's not too big to fix uh, and that we cannot allow it to fail and just, you know, quantified the value of whales and quantified the value of oceans in just such a remarkably beautiful way. And overall, you know, I think, I think it's safe to say that we're all in awe of everyone that's sort of come to the platform and spoken and, and showed and expressed and illustrated their passion and their impact and their drive to really, really do this, including in the face of COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns and lock of, you know, loss of lives and livelihoods. And, you know, we're just impressed by the sheer quantity of passion and impact that's represented by everybody that's joined us over the last three days. So, you know, every speaker was remarkable. 
every panel, every talk, every performance. And it's really, really self-evident that we're building momentum to action, to accountability and to unleashing the full possibility and potential of things. Awesome. Hannah, what about you? I mean, just to echo down to there, I think what's fascinating about this program is I remember in the um, application process, just seeing all of these brilliant ideas and then this week, seeing them come to life. Um, I mean, the first thing that really stands out for me is this was the week of women. I mean, how many amazing, trailblazing, powerful women did we have here this week? Um, so that's something that's really kind of stuck in my mind. Um, and particularly in the conversation you had, Nadira, uh, with um, her ex excellent President um, Sally Johnson earlier in the week um, and you're having a conversation about um, overcoming the impact uh, sorry the barriers to women leading and um, her response to you know what 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 could be achieved if these barriers were removed was just kind of like well isn't this obvious and it is obvious like we've seen around the world what happens when women lead and we just you know we know what needs to happen to ensure that women have the same access to education, have the same access to opportunities, um, that they're represented throughout society. Um, but I think that just really resonated. Of, of course, we know what women can do. And the women that we've seen here this week have just represented that throughout. I mean, this morning, we opened the day with an all female panel talking about how we turn this moment into a movement. And I'm not saying I'm surprised it's an all female panel. I'm just saying that every woman on that panel really kind of brought that message home. Um, and actually, let's be honest, it is surprising in the conference context to have an all women panel. And it's awesome that that's something yet another kind of like just routine thing that you've created in this space. Like that's something for you guys to be really proud of. And it's visible, not just every day, but every morning in every session. Um, and it's it's so striking. So that's, it's wonderful to hear. Um, and Christina, what about you? Yeah, so Nadir, when you're saying that normally in these conference rooms, it's kind of like the same consistent people, I wanna add to that. I think it's also like the same consistent talking points that a lot of the times what happens is, um, I think we Amen. all- <laughs> we all know it to some degree. I'm just speaking the truth um, that it's the same rhetoric, it's the same buzzwords, but they're kind of shuffled um, in the order and it's, there's not much substance behind it. And so what I really loved about the SDG Action Zone this year, um, which Dauda, you hit the nail on the head about the passion and the color that all of these speakers were able to bring to the conversations was um, the, your closing yesterday with Vanessa Nakate. I am not someone that gets emotional, but I found myself getting teary eyed by that. I think, especially when she said, we cannot eat coal, we cannot drink oil, we cannot serve fossil fuels on the dining table. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think this stark imagery of us literally poisoning our futures, it's, it's so true. Um, and you can trust me, my generation, I feel like we have enough things to worry about, let alone an apocalyptic <laughs> future. Um, so I think what Vanessa represents though is this radical transformation that's needed and it's not, it's at the people level, it's with people power, it's this massive mobilization amongst all generations that that's how we get to that vision. Um, and there's one other quote that I wanna bring up, not from the SDG Action Zone, but I think it ties in really well with-, um, with You're this allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I was, in, I was listening to this podcast and they said, there's half of the people that they're naive about climate science. There's another half of people though that are naive about climate action. Um, and that is dangerous because if we're thinking about this 10 year journey that we have, we need, we really need to, we can't underestimate the, the urgency we have to half carbon emissions by 2030. So. Vanessa also, what she represented for me was that urgency and, and that action. Um, and Vanessa, she just got it. I think she needs to go viral tomorrow. I will push on my social media and I hope that everyone watching pushes on theirs. <laughs> yeah, there were so many of those kinds of speakers, but I think I love that you mentioned that quote because in the moment I just thought, oh, that hits so hard and it's so right, but it's also so authentic. It's not a talking yeah. point by any stretch of the imagination. And then, you know, the session finishes and I have a message from a friend I made 
on a trip to South Africa, who's in her 60s as a retired physician in England, she's quoting that and she's like, oh my God, my mind is blown. And I just think like we, we try, we have a tendency to put people into silos and sort of assume that activism matters to this and this kind of activism matters to this person in this space or in this geography. And one of the beautiful things about this bringing the world to the UN and taking the UN out to the world is that it's actually happening. You know, we're seeing it happen in real time on the Twitter walls even. <laughs> um, and that's like a truly beautiful thing. And it doesn't happen every day. It doesn't happen most days. Um, right. so and, it, uh, and the conversation that you also don't had apologize. With, with, the, uh, with the deputy secretary general, again, that was in conversation up close and personal to that level of power. Um, and really, really, you know, her opening up on her experience on the way that she thinks and sees the world uh, through the lens of, you know, being the number two of the United Nations, but also holding that deep empathy uh, that we're talking about and that we've heard about over the last course of the three days. Um, it was really just remarkable. And I have to say that was the start of my little highlights reflection to be completely honest. Um, as I said, in the session, I'm a total DSG, uh, fangirl, but it was so cool to sit and talk to somebody who is who she is and also recognize in her every woman that I think is amazing in my life, including the three women in this conversation. Um, and that's, that's, an, that's, that's just not to overuse the word amazing, but it is actually that, you know, it is, it is awesome in the true meaning of the word awesome. But then in my, in my chat with her, before we even got on the, in, into the session, she mentioned that she had been watching the Sal Khan session and that she remembered doing a Ted talk with him back when Khan Academy was just starting and how cool it was for her to see what Khan Academy has become. And then I was thinking about the session I did with the YouTube creators and then Vanessa Nakate and just thinking like, we're almost, I had this moment of sort of out of body thinking like, this is a mesh network, right? It's a mesh network across the entire world. And we have captured in these three days that it is unfathomably powerful. And I, I hope that's something you take deeply to heart because it is such a special part of the work that you do. Um, and it's, it's, it literally is awe inspiring. So those are my highlights. You guys are my highlights. <laughs> um, so with that, to, uh, sorry? I just wanted to add one more on Yes, that. you're allowed to. <laughs> just really ignited something in my memory. Um, so another one that I wanted to draw upon was the session on creative philanthropy. And there was uh, Maya Vogel uh, from Talent House actually said in that session that the more, um, this is related to the open brief, uh, where the UN put out this, this call to creatives. And she said that the amazing thing about creatives is that the more they offer these briefs and the more work and opportunities they offer them, the bigger the community grows. And she actually said, you know, this is a renewable resource. And I think that that's what's exciting about this community that we're building through the SDG Action Zone is that the community keeps growing. The more we convene and the more we offer people a platform and their voice to be heard, we're just seeing it grow and grow. And that energy, that renewable feeling about this is something that, you know, I think we're all so excited about. 100%. So yes, we can snaps for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk um, vision. Let's talk about next steps and moving forward. Imagine it's 2029. We have been sort of infused with all this incredible learning from these past three days. What could the world look like in 2029? Uh, great question. You know, I think part of part of that is it has to look different than what it is now. Um, you know, we have to be further along. We have to have used this moment to pivot in the right direction where all of the decisions and all of the incentive structures and systems that exist are built on delivering and serving and keeping humans and society and people at the center and middle of every decision that we make and plan it right alongside it in the middle, um, you know, where everyone deserves a fair, just, equitable future, where the level playing field is a real thing, where women are hopefully more than 50% represented in everything. You know, the DSG said earlier today, we are all born of women. Um, that's true for 100% of people that are alive. Um, and you know, it's just, where education is available and accessible, where technology is a force for good and is used to connect people rather than separate and create hierarchies. Um, you know, where 
that the things that we consume and produce are done so responsibly, again, with people and planet at the heart of that, and that things are accessible to everyone everywhere in that same regard. Um, you know, where we're doing exactly what uh, Eddie said, you know, that we're unleashing the full potential of everyone, whether they're vulnerable or not, and just really, really harnessing that. And, you know, this might sound utopic, but it's the only way we're going to get where we need to go together. And, you know, there's an African proverb, you go further together. Uh, the DSG said, you know, we is stronger than I. And, you know, what we've seen in the response to COVID is collective action and individual action are the two things that need to come together to really, really create solutions, uh, durable solutions. And, you know, I hope for my children and my children's children, we are able to do and realize this vision. Marina, what does your 2029 look like? What could it be? So I, I still have in my mind all the quotes that you mentioned, you know, from Vanessa, from Elena, from Eddie, from Dia, from many others. And, and those quotes and, and the energy that I felt in the last three days make me feel very optimistic of what the world could look like in 2029. So I, I can see now um, a, a new world which is more inclusive, where everyone everywhere has opportunity, a world which is more sustainable. And uh, somehow something that struck me, but struck all of, all of you, I mean, we touched upon already, is that uh, we've seen so many women and so many young people, you know, talking with passion, with knowledge, with, uh, with, with evidence. And, and because we were all surprised and struck, it means that we don't see enough of this. So I, I really hope uh, that we will have a, in 2029 more women and represented in all sector of our society because this is something that has to change. Absolutely, and everything else will get better, right? <laughs> That's the reality. We know it's true. Um, so I have to ask what I, I is a hard question, honestly, but it's a question I don't think is asked enough, which is what do we actually do to get there? So how do we get from where we are right now to that vision that you're talking about, Marina? Continue the thought to that, that place of action for folks that are watching right now and wanna go help us realize that vision. I mean, I, I, I think we, we've heard the solution and many solutions are not new. I mean, we, we've heard a loud and, and tested solution in the area of taxation, climate action, renewable energy, you know, job creation and, uh, you know, equal access to water, sanitation, to equal pay, to, you know, breaking the stereotypes that uh, somehow nurture violence and then also, you know, creating access to opportunity with people with disability and, you know, different opportunity and, and, and access to everyone. So the list is very long. What is really needed, and I think that also the Secretary General you know, mentioned it last week at the SDG moment is the political will. So somehow we need to make sure, we need to urge leaders that they put the taxpayer money and the policy that they can control towards people and planet, towards the solution, which are there and which are evidence-based and which have supported, you know, by people. We have 10 years ahead of us. It's possible, it's feasible. And uh, as Mandela taught us, it seems impossible until it's done. So advocacy, so continue the movement and continue persistence, perseverance, passion, but we will get there. And it's not mysterious, exactly like you said, we have everything we need. We just need that, that will. Dada, what about, what about you? What needs to happen for us to get from right here to where we imagine in 2030? Um, I think it's, you know, building on what Marina said, I think it's about mobilization. It's about raising the ambition. It's about supercharging solutions. Again, exactly the ingredients in the decade of action, right? It's, um, you know, a, a turning point of uh, changing the parameters and the paradigms and flipping the orthodoxy, as the Secretary General would say, where you know people are really rising up and their voices are being heard and governments around the world are are fulfilling the full potential of their societies and economies and and the need to provide solutions uh rather than uh the opposite um you know we 
We're super, super fortunate to have created uh, Nations United, uh, the film that premiered this week, um, on the decade of action and on what some of the transformative solutions are that could unwash, unlock that transformative change. Um, and it's it's really, again, you know, it's about what, what Hindu said about empathy, empathy being activism and the collective and the individual action and, you know, the voice of the people really rising up. But like everything else, hope needs action to be realized. So we can't only talk about it, we need to do it. And that means changing the systems, changing the incentive structures. You know, we've seen literally trillions of dollars flooded into economies as a result of COVID uh, at a time where, you know, a few short months ago, every, no one thought any of that was possible. Um, and how that money uh, hits and how that money is invested uh, should really be delivering the full potential of the societies in which they're needed to be propped up by. Um, so it's, again, you know, to use Mandela's quote, it, it's, it seems impossible until it's done. A lot of things have been recently done that we thought were impossible. Let's flip it, right, uh, to the positive uh, and really, really use that to supercharge where we are right now. Um, you know, my deep hope is that, no offense to anyone else on the line, but that we're all unemployed because the job has been done. Um, that would be success in my mind. Um, and I hope for the world that that is the case uh, and that we sort of pivot to a different sort of structure where we are able to you know, create synergies and harmonies and economies that are really actually providing solutions rather than harm. Um, so. Well said. Um, and we took a big step here this week, right? There have been so many important conversations um, and it's the fact of the matter is it doesn't end here. The moment doesn't end here. Um, we have so much more to do um, and you're doing it. Everyone that we've seen this entire week is doing it. So sad for me that we are coming to the end of our time together. Um, so before we say goodbye, I think we have a few closing remarks, a few, sorry, I'll go back. So before we say goodbye, I think we have a few closing remarks from Marina and Dauda. Take it away, Marina. So I think we have um, many people to thank because uh, these three days and then other events, the mobilization on the ground, uh, have been possible because of many people, not just you know the people gathered tonight. And uh, for, first of all, let me start by thanking the, our donors, our sponsor, the, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Federal Government of Germany, Project Everyone, and United Nations Foundation for their contribution, their creativity, and their general support. And then let me thank the 38 million people that took action to turn it around for people and planet. Now that. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's so many people to thank. Uh, first of all, to all of the speakers and the session hosts for bringing your passion, your commitment and inspiring us um, and guiding what is possible as well as providing bright lights uh, amongst uh, a dark uh, moment. Um, you know, thank you for the partners, both within the UN system as well as beyond it. Thank you to the Strategy Hub members for your strategic guidance to help shape our program uh, and the work that you do with us outside of September. Uh, thank you to Google, YouTube, uh, not only for the sessions that you've curated, um, but also for that amazing content that you've done with regard to the YouTube Tribeca Enterprise and UN Creative Partnership. Uh, we saw a lot of that artwork in the interstitial and it just is really, really beautiful um, and uh, will hopefully captivate people's uh, mindsets about what's possible. Um, thank you to Project Everyone. Uh, in addition to being fantastic collaborators uh, in making Nations United, uh, also just wanna thank you for the support in the sessions that you've helped curate, as well as again, that super colorful, energetic, informative global goals content uh, that injected energy throughout the course of a few days. Um, wanna thank really, really quickly Talent House uh, for helping collaborate with us on the open brief and providing that crazy powerful platform. Um, as we said, as we heard before, you know, we sent a brief, a deck to 50 people within three weeks, uh, 50,000 people had been in it. We'd received 17,000 responses from 143 countries and you hosted that platform, so thank you. Um, to TBWA Melbourne and TBWA Global for the beautiful design language 
uh, that you helped develop for us and the logos and the stamps and uh, just the collaboration partnership you've given us over the years uh, has been just really inspirational, remarkable, and uh, at a very, very difficult time as well. So thank you. And I'm sure I've forgotten a ton of people, but uh, I, that, I'll start with that. So let me continue. I mean, we, we spoke a lot about creativity. So let me thank again the artists and producer behind the creative content that uh, so beautifully demonstrate a different form of advocacy and, and activism through expression, including BBC StoryWorks, My World 360 Creators, 72 Films, Sesame Street, TBWA, Christian Huguenot, Jonathan Ollinger, and also let us thank our visual scribe, Chris Gadbury, and thank you to our sound branding made by Eri Werden and Augustin Yacona of Yamawa Music. Yeah, um, and again, a very, very final thanks to uh, the teams and individuals behind the scenes and in front of the line that really, really helped deliver this event. Uh, thank you to the colleagues in the executive office of the Secretary General, to the Deputy Secretary General herself uh, and her formidable team for the vision to create and the trust in delivering the SDG Action Zone in all of its dynamism. Um, thank you to our collaborators in the virtual show. Um, they stepped in with determination to deliver an absolutely beautiful platform and product, uh, a mint you know, huge time constraints and you guys really, really delivered uh, marvelously. So thank you. Um, to Christian for the sleepless nights as our video producer, our editor, our cook at times. I love the Ratatouille, thank you. Uh, but just being, you know, who you are and seeing everything go through to the very, very end uh, in a remarkable way. And a last and final huge thanks to Nadira for masterfully taking us through the program over the course of the days and just making sense of something that is not easy, is complex, but is absolutely urgent and essential. And last and finally least, uh, actually two, one to the organizing teams of the SDG Action Campaign, what a job, to the SDG Strategy Hub team, amazing. What a job. <laughs> uh, to UNOP being led by Anne-Marie at the moment, uh, and to you and colleagues across the system for seamlessly navigating this virtual space and allowing us the opportunity to really, really bring this to life. Um, and last but not least, uh, thank you to every single person who helped us reach millions of homes across the world by sharing, by engaging uh, with these critical conversations. And thank you all for tuning in. Um, but also I'm gonna preempt my last thanks <laughs> for everything that everyone is going to go and do from this point. Um, the DSG often says we need to give people homework and actions that need to be ha uh, that need to happen to move the needle. And I think every each and one of us know what it is that we need to go and do to help contribute to this. So thank you in advance. Let's make that real uh, and hopefully see you again next year. And what's the hashtag they should use? Hashtag SDG Action Zone. Yes. <laughs> I have to get it in one more time. Thank you so much to everyone. It's impossible for me to name how many wonderful people, um, though Marina and Dowda gave it a great try, <laughs> have gotten involved and made this all possible. But it is wonderful. It makes my job really easy. And all there is left for me to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep spreading the conversation. We love you and we will see you next year. That is a wrap from the 2020 SDG Action Zone. Bye. Bye. Oh.